Immediate past Nigeria Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bozgida Mustafa has testified before a federal high court in Abuja on Tuesday that the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN under the leadership era of Godwin Emefile forced the signature of the then President Muhammadu Buhari to withdraw $6.2 million under alleged fraudulent claim of paying foreign observers for the 2023 general elections. The EFCC had accused Emefile of impersonating the secretary to the government of the federation to illegally obtain a sum of $6.2 million. The EFCC alleged that on February 8, 2023, Emefile connived with one Odo Ocheme, who is now on the run, to obtain $6.2 million from the CBN, claiming that it was requested by the SGF via a letter dated the 26th of January 2023 with Refno. SGF.43 per liter.01, 201. According to the EFCC, Emefile allegedly claimed that the SGF requested the CBN to release a contingent logistic advance in the sum of $6,230,000 in line with Mr. President's directive. Furthermore, the anti graft agency alleged that Emefile, in January 2023, forged a document titled, Pre Presidential Directive on Foreign Election Observer Missions, dated the 26th of January 2023, with reference number SGF.43 per liter.01, 201. He said to have allegedly connived with the Flynn Ochema to commit the illegal act to wit forgery. Details of the immediate past secretary to the Federation was Gida Mustafa testimonies before the court reads below as presented by the Public Relations Unit of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The second prosecution witness, PW2, in the ongoing trial of former governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin Emefile, was Gida Mustafa. On Tuesday, February 13, 2024, told Justice Hamza Mwazo of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, High Court, Maitama, Abuja, that neither former President Muhammadu Buhari nor himself raised a memo directing the Apex Bank to pay the sum of $6,230,000, $6,230,000 in cash for international election observers in the last 2023 general election. Mustafa told the court he never came across anything about the transaction while he was serving as the secretary to the government of the federation until he left office. My lord, all through my years in service at my capacity, I never came across such a document. Having served for five years, seven months, I can say this document did not emanate from the office of the president, he said. Continuing, Mustafa faulted the correspondence Emefile claimed came from the president's office with a reference number, pointing out that once a correspondence has the president's seal, there is no need for a reference number, because the seal is the authority. I have looked at it, read it, and the Federal Executive Council's decisions are not transmitted by letters but through extracts after conclusions were adopted. My lord, I am a custodian of all records, therefore, the president cannot give me the records, and in all my years in service, I have never heard the term, special appropriation provision, that is referred to here. In all the correspondences I have received from my principal, it has never ended with please accept the assurance of my highest regard. I am his subordinate, so nothing of such would emanate. And lastly, by law, the Nigerian government has nothing to do with financing foreign observers. I know for a fact because I manage to elections, so the responsibility of such lies with INEC, he said. Asked by the prosecution counsel, Rotimi Oyedapo, sang, in respect of Exhibit PD7, which states that it was 187 fake meeting that held in the 18th of January 2023, Mustafa affirmed that a fake meeting held, but it was not 187 session, but rather first meeting of the year because it was January. My lord, there was a meeting and it was the first meeting, not 187. It was the first meeting of the year. My lord, all fake meetings are normally presided over by the president or vice president. In the case of the 18th of January, it was the vice president that presided over the meeting because the president was not around. My role was to prepare the agenda of the meeting and on that day, there was a 16-point agenda, and there was no agenda that had to do with foreign observers, so it did not appear on the fake of the 18th of January. There was no such approval or anything else from the fake, he said. 
Asked whether the letter for the approval of the money emanated from his office, Mustafa denied any knowledge regarding it. My lord, to the best of my knowledge, that letter did not emanate from my office, not to talk of signing it. I am saying it was not from me for the following reasons. I was not privy to the oppressions of CBN, so I cannot write to the governor or the director. Secondly, the heading is defective because it reads, reference, for election observers. It's presupposed that there were previous correspondences when you say ref. So, my lord, it is not true because it does not carry any fake approval. And finally, there was a reference at the end of the letter, he said. Mustafa further told the court that he was not aware of any special task force and had no idea who Jibril Abubakar is. I wish to state, my lord, that I am not aware of any special task force and I do not know one Jibril Abubakar, principal officer one, who was alleged as the coordinator of this task force, so I did not introduce any Abubakar to CBN governor, he said. While on cross-examination, Matthew Booker, son, asked whether Mustafa received any amount from the money. He said he did not receive a single dollar when he was seven and when he left office. Mustafa denied knowledge of knowing Abu Bakr, stressing that he had never met him, nor did he ever work for him. He further said that he knew about the scandal on social media when it was stated that the defendant and himself connived to steal the huge amount of money, and for him to protect and redeem his image and integrity before the world, he then made a press release exonerating himself and at the same time encouraged further investigation on getting to the root of the matter. After his testimony, Justice Muazo adjourned the matter till 7, 11 and the 25th of March 2024 for continuation of trial. Osazuwa Hanebe, bringing you the news in a more digital way.